uh, in this presentation, I will introduce you some basic things from the FPGA world. Uh, we will be scratching on the surface, so if uh, if you want to know more, feel free to write me, and I can provide a more detailed presentation later. So let's start with uh, some agenda. I will start with uh, the short introduction of of this technology. Then I will tell you how the FPGA is working, how to then how to program it, and after that. We will have a plenty of time for for the discussion uh, during the presentation. Feel free to stop me if you are interested in something, and if I will be able, I will answer you. So let's start. What is an FPGA? The FPGA is an acronym. It's an acronym for the Field Programmable Gate Array. So very simply, uh, the FPGA is a digital circuit where you are able to run any digital design like a standard CPU or the RISC CPU and in our case, the network interface card, but this list is uh, not complete. You, you, you can run any digital circuit you are, you are thinking about. Uh, the, the big advantage of the FGA is that it's programmable in the field. Uh, you can implement the high performance digital circuit so, for example, if you want to process uh, network traffic at speed of 100 gigs, then you can uh, implement, the implement the hardware which is capable to, to uh, process it. And the big advantage is that, uh, you know, that you need to solder or connect uh, something with cables. You can uh, develop the digital design from the design tool you, after that, you will you will generate the bitstream, which is up, which is then loaded into the FPGA, and then the FPGA is working like you described. So uh, some some advantages and the, and disadvantages for the FPGA, uh, as I already said, it's in the field, it's capable to reach high performance because you are running the hardware, and very typically you are programming uh, the digital circuit or a device which is embedded for one kind of operation. And this allows you to, <coughs> to optimize the approach on a clock level. Uh, the FPGA is highly parallel because the hardware is parallel, parallel from nature and you are just using it. And another big advantage is that you are capable to develop the hardware very rapidly. Because if you made a mistake, then you can fix it and resynthesize the whole design. And after that, you will get a B-stream with a fixed error. Uh, now, disadvantages. You need to learn the hardware description language. It's, it's, it is a special kind of language for the, for the description of uh, digital designs. The most popular ones are uh, the VHDL and Verilog. And sometimes it's very tricky to program in it because you are you are working on a on a clock level, so debugging takes uh, much more time. Uh, it can be very hard for uh, for a, for a large and a complex designs, and and uh, yeah, it can be very tricky. But uh, it allows you to. But, but it allows you to control the design on, uh, on, on the lowest possible level. Uh, architecture matters. So if you want to reach the high performance, then you need to think about the architecture and you have to optimize it for the given purpose. And another dimension is that you need to meet the, cir the circuit timing. So, so uh, when you are programming FPGA, you, for example, need to reach the frequency of 200 megahertz. And if the critical path through the design, which is the time, which is the time of, uh, of the longest uh, way through the design, uh, if, uh, if uh, this path is so high that you, don't, that you can't meet the design 
uh, timing, then you need to uh, make some changes. For example, insert some registers, implement some pipelining, and so on. So this is a really so this is a really new dimension for uh, people who are typically programming in uh, C or C++. So with FPGA, you can develop any digital cir circuit without soldering. Uh, you you are not uh, you, you don't need to use the breadboard cables and any integrated circuit and if you made a mistake you can easily recompile uh, the whole design uh, the fpga is typically used as the main uh, unit for data processing which is in our case when uh, where we are where we are using the fpga on uh, for the processing of uh, network data or uh, another typical approach is that uh, the FPGA is used in tandem with uh, the standard CPU unit for implementation of co-processing uh, and hardware accelerator units. So, for example, you can implement the, the uh, hardware accelerator for the data compression. And if you, uh, and if you need the... And, and if you need another hardware accelerator, for example, for the processing of network data, then you can... Uh, then you can swap the the, the, the bitstream in the FPGA, and you can uh, customize the FPGA to to make another kind of uh, the hardware of the accelerator things. So uh, the main the main FPGA vendors is Xilinx and Intel. Uh, both vendors provide provide low end and very cheap FPGAs and high end very expensive FPGAs. Uh, some FPGAs are also available with uh, the ARM cores and if you look on the internet then you will find a lot of development boards. Uh, I, I chose uh, just uh, two of them. For, uh, for example the NetFPGA which is a network interface card with uh, the FPGA on it. Uh, it has four, ten 10 gigi port, uh, it's equipped with uh, the PCI Express Gen 3 uh, slot. Uh, it's equipped with the Xilinx Vertex 7 FPGA and you are also able to add some, some uh, external memories in, in, into the uh, uh, sodium slots. And it, it also has some uh, SATA ports. Uh, another very interesting and not so expensive platform is uh, the Zeebo, uh, which is the FPGA with uh, the ARM processor. So, so, uh, so in this architecture, you are able to imp you, you are able to, uh, for example, run Linux and and upload the uh, FPGA stream to to have some, uh, for example, hardware accelerator for processing of uh, of a net network data. As you can see, it's a it's a small computer. It's equipped with uh, DDR3 memory, with Ethernet connection. It's equipped with uh, USBs, some audio uh, inputs and outputs, uh, GPIO ports, and it also and it also, it also has a serial port. So it's a really small computer where you can implement anything you you want. We will start with uh, digital circuits. Digital circuits are very typically operating with zeros and ones. There are some special uh, values like uh, uh, like uh, state of high of uh, high impedance, which is typically used for the communication on buses. But in this case, uh, we can say that uh, digital circuits are operating with two uh, with two logical values, which is logical zero and logical one. These values are used in uh, are used with logical operations. Uh, you know them from the from the languages like a C or C++. It's typically AND, OR, and exclusive OR, and etc. Et uh, there are two examples for the AND and, and OR. Uh, you can see the schematic symbol and the truth table where we, where we have uh, inputs and output, A and B, are inputs and the and, and, and the last column is uh, the generated output. So we have so we have all combinations uh, of inputs and all, uh, which produces some output. 
and the third uh, or there is also the uh, equivalent uh, in a C language. So logical operations are then grouped into logical equations uh, where we can use the Boole's algebra to, to simplify them. And if you want to, in, and if you want to express the, the, the logical equations, then we can use the, the, let's say, digital circuit. We can use the equation, or we can use the truth table. Uh, I will demonstrate it on a on a simple one bit adder. Uh, the one bit adder is typically it typically consists of two two half headers, where the half header has two inputs A and B, and this half header generates uh, generates the carry for the next stage, which is the output C and the value of the sum. Uh, if we if we write down the truth table and if we fail uh, fail the outputs, then we can infer uh, the equations that the sum is equal to the A or B and the carry to the next stage is equal, is equal to uh, A and B. This is the half adder. Uh, the full adder has, uh, let's say, another, mo an, uh, another input, which is the carry from the previous stage. And uh, on this slide, you can see the implementation using the digital circuit. Using the digital circuit, we can, we can identify uh, the half headers uh, uh, do you see my mouse? Uh, yes, yes, we see. Yeah, yeah, e excellent. So, uh, so this uh, disk sort gate and this end gate is the first half header, and disk sort gate and this end gate is the second half header, and uh, the, the, uh, and outputs from from uh, the carry generations are or together to, to generate the final output. So this is a simple one bit adder. And if you connect these, uh, these adders in the chain, chain then you can uh, get the n bit uh, adder. Uh, again, we, we can also write down the truth table where we enumerate all the inputs and we will write down all the, in, all the outputs. Uh, this, this truth table can be encoded into the special memory which, which has a three bit address and two bit output where we uh, encode the where we encode the uh, value of the sum and the value of the carry and this is the crucial for FPGA because because FPGA very typically encodes this logical circuit into the truth table and after that it generates the content of the memory which is addressed by the input. You will uh, you will see it uh, you you will see it later. So this is another possible implementation of this. If you have if you if you have a three bit memory with a two bit output. Uh, digital circuits are typically divided into two main groups. The first one is the are the group of asynchronous circuits, uh, where the output or outputs directly depend on inputs. Uh, the, example, the, the example can be the one bit adder. As you can see in this example, we don't have any, any uh, clock signal. Uh, the synchronous circuit is uh, can be understood as a sequential logic. So this kind of uh, digital circuit is clocked by, by a clock signal and the output depends on inputs and history. So very typically you have a memory element inside this circuit. Uh, for example, the, the one bit register, which is called as a D flip flop. And, uh, the, and for example, the register is a, is a, is a circuit where the input, uh, when, when the input is passed to the output and hold, uh, after and it, uh, and hold after the rising edge of the clock cycle. I will show you uh, the example on the next slide. Uh, another example of synchronous circuit is uh, the finite state machines. Or is the implementation of finite state machine, uh, which can be, for example, some uh, control 
of uh, of uh, uh, it can be for example the controller of uh, the, of a digital circuit which controls uh, how how we are communicating with uh, with another components of of uh, the digital design uh, the synchronous and asynchronous system uh, circuits together is for example the arm processor or another different uh, digital circuit and we are using to get, and we are typically using together the, syn the synchronous and asynchronous circuits to to uh, implement the the hardware accelerator uh, i was already talking about the timing as i, as I already said it's uh, another dimension which we need to meet uh, which, we need, which we need to meet during the development of a, of a digital design uh, and uh, typically we need to we need to hold two uh, two two parameters which is the setup uh, which, which is the setup which is setup timing and the whole timing uh, as you can see uh, as, as you can see on the diagram there is a clock cycle and on a rising edge uh, we need to uh, and, and we, uh, before the rising edge we need to have uh, the input data right, uh, daily uh, valid and we also need to have the data valid after uh, after uh, the rising edge uh, this is uh, th this is because the let's say it, it's it's a physical constraint of uh, of uh, of uh, digital circuits because if you if, if you don't meet this timing then you will fall into the metastability issue uh, which is which isn't good because uh, during the metastability you are not able to decide if if uh, the output of uh, of uh, this of, of this block is zero or one so this is uh, this is the physical requirement of uh, of uh, of the of, of the technology uh, now how the fpga looks like uh, it's a it's a 2d structure of uh, configure of configurable logical blocks which are connected together by a configurable uh, interconnection network uh, then we also have some special blocks which are which are uh, dealing with the output and input from the FPGA. So using these outputs, you are able to communicate with another circuits on, on the board. And, uh, very, and very typically the FPGA also contains some, some, uh, some special blocks uh, which are hard coded. Uh, for example, the, for, for example some, uh, the FPGA has, uh, has some blocks for uh, communication uh, on a high speed with external devices, it, it has uh, embedded uh, memories, uh, digital signal processors, uh, CPU cores, and so on. Uh, now, if you if you look in if you look into the CLB, uh, we can we, we can see that there are two slices for the case of the Sinex FPGAs. Uh, the structure of the configurable of the configurable logical block depends on the FPGA vendor, uh, but we can say that the structure is more or less the same. They are just different names. Uh, inside the slice, we have a lookup table, which is a, which is a four port memory. So you are able to implement a logic of uh, a logical uh, a logic function with four inputs and one output. There is also that there is the uh, what the, there is a one bit register for the implementation of syn of synchronous circuit. As you can see, it's clocked by the clock signal, and there is a multiplexer which allows you to select between the let's say light value from from the lookup table. Uh, this path is for the implementation of the asynchronous digital circuits, and this path is used for the implementation of synchronous digital circuits. Uh, but 
this is very simplified structure of the slice. If you are interested, I can if you are interested, I can open you the uh, documentation for one FPGA, and you can see the whole implementation of of uh, of, of, of uh, the slice. But I think that you don't that you don't need to see it. But uh, but the slice architecture also contains some some uh, special connections to another slices to implement. Uh, to, to implement fa a, a fast carry for the for, for the for, uh, the fast data transfer to the next slice and so on. Uh, FPGA also contains uh, uh, RAM blocks, which are distribu which are typically distrib uh, distributed in columns, as you can see here uh, in the figure. Uh, I've also looked into the documentation to to sh uh, to demonstrate that the memory on the FPGA is not so big. Uh, as you can see, for the for the case of the Vertex Seven FPGA, we are we, we are able to use, for example, the six megabytes of memory, and for the for for the Vertex Ultra Scale FPGA, we are able to use sixteen uh, approximately sixteen yeah. me megabytes of memory. <laughs> Uh, so as you can see, internal memory is is uh, not large, and external so the external memory is really is really needed. Uh, due to this, uh, the FPGAs are also some FPGAs are equipped with uh, the uh, new generation of uh, parallel memory, which is the HBM or or or, or HMC. So, so, sorry, sorry, but if everyone can mute because there is some noise background. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, th thank you, Xavier. Uh, or there is also capability. Uh, there is also possibility to connect the external memory uh, to the FPGA. Uh, in this case, the the memory controller can be implemented in a logic, or there can be a special uh, hard coded block. It depends on the FPGA. Uh, the FPGA is also typic very typically equipped with a digital signal processor and and special uh, multipliers blocks for the implementation of uh, of uh, more complex mul uh, multiplication e computation for for the implementation of uh, more complex uh, computation of uh, equations where we want where we need to mi mu multiply uh, values together. And they are again distributed uh, in in columns across the FPGA. Uh, the clock signal is distributed in FPGA using the clock tree, which is a special low latency network for distribution of clock signal. And as you can and, and as you can see, it's uh, the structure of the clock tree is is like is like this. There is a clock signal uh, connected approximately in the middle of the FPGA, and then it's distributed in this regular shape because we want to have uh, the, let's say, latency of the clock signal is required to be as minimal as possible. Uh, the FPGA also contains the clock manager, which is a special block for modification of source clock signal because very typically uh, you have uh, you have a source of the clock signal on on the board. Uh, let's say that the generator generates a signal on the frequency of 100 megahertz, but you want to run the the uh, you want to run your design on the half frequency. So you need a special uh, block which is able to, to, to modify the clock signal. And this modified clock signal is then connected into, into the uh, clock tree to, pro, to, to provide the reference clock for the design. Uh, this, 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 uh, this block is called uh, as a clock manager or a DCM, digital clock, clock management. Uh, this circuit is capable to modify the frequency and the phase of the clock signal. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, output named C uh, CL CLK. So for example, from, from uh, this output, the, the clock uh, signal is shifted 
uh, by 90 uh, degrees and so you have a lot of capabilities how to connect uh, your design on a desired clock. Uh, the FPGA also contains some so uh, digit, some digital designs can be uh, in, or some cores can be implemented as a soft core and a hard core. The soft core is implemented in logic, so it's implemented in in a, in a, these configurable logical blocks, and uh, this means that these these blocks consumes uh, resources on FPGA. Uh, so they are synthesized during the during the code translation and very typically these kind of blocks runs on a lower frequency and uh, and uh, the consumes more resources based on on the complexity of uh, the implemented core but some cores can be uh, are are uh, named hard cores means that they can be directly used from the from the digital design but you don't, but you don't need to synthesize it synthesize it because they are uh, implemented on a FPGA and if there is some mistake then you are forced to live with it because you cannot reprogram uh, these kind of blocks. Uh, the example of these blocks can be for example the Paro PC uh, core, ARM core or uh, CRC32 blocks. And now just few words how we can program the FPGA. Uh, if we want to program the FPGA, then we then we need to generate a configuration for for, uh, for it. Uh, the configuration uh, contains the content of lookup tables, uh, configuration of interconnection network, and configuration of uh, clock management and and another uh, and another hardware block. So, for example, uh, if we look on the FPGA or let's say the simplified structure of the FPGA, uh, then the Bitstream tell, tells us that uh, our design will be implemented in, let's say, these, these blocks. So we will know the content of the lookup table, we will know the content, uh, we, we will know the content of, uh, let's, let's say, the block RAM memories, which are distributed in columns, and then we need to connect these blocks together uh, via the configurable interconnection network. And this is exactly what the Bstream is. It's the configuration of all elements which are uh, implemented or, or which are provided by the FPGA. Uh, each vendor has its own development tool. We don't have we, do, we, we don't have any uh, let's say general tool which can generate the Bstream for all FPGAs because because uh, the con because it's a uh, it's just the secret of of that of, of that vendors how how uh, the the Bstream looks like how is generated and so on. So in the case of Xilinx. Uh, the development tool co is called as a Vivado, and for the case of Intel, uh, it's uh, called as a as, as a Quartus. Uh, now, yeah. if we want to describe the digital design, then we can use the HDL language. You will see some example later, or we can use more abstract language, which is very typical the C or C plus plus. This is the language which is familiar for a lot of for a lot of uh, developers and uh, computer engineers, or we can use, for example, the blue spec, uh, which comes from the Haskell and it has uh, great power for for uh, if you want to express the, the digital if you want to express the digital circuit. I will also show you. Uh, some example how the design in a in a blue spec looks like and how we can translate it. Mm -hmm. I have a question here mm -hmm. uh, regarding the development tool. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if it is Vivaldo, Vado, mm -hmm. and it is provided uh, as you buy the um, 
FPGA card or it is free to download? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so for example, in the case of Vivado, you can you can download it from the Xilinx web page. But uh, after that, it depends on the FPGA because some FPGAs are, let's say, uh, if if you buy FPGA, then you need to uh, then you need to buy uh, a license to use it inside of Vivado. Uh, this is very typical for the high-end FPGAs, but if you if you buy some uh, low end fpga then you can use the free version of this tool so in so in your case uh, i think you have uh, you have uh, the net fpga in your case you will need a license to to synthesize the bstream for this uh, fpga uh, it, it 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 depends on 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 the type Uh, so now a few words about the hardware description language. It's a programming language which is older than me. <laughs> it's used for the description of uh, digital circuits. It's uh, really highly parallel because uh, it uses it is using the concept of communicating processes, which are uh, let's say clocked by the clock by by a clock signal, uh, and you really need to think differently. When you are programming in in HDL compared to the programming in a C or a C++, because so it's so it's so it's harder to so it's harder to to learn because you really need to think in parallel everything happening in in the same in uh, the same time. Uh, you are working on a clock level, so debugging is is uh, is uh, cumbersome. It's uh, it can be very tricky for uh, for a more complex designs. And uh, you are, and when when you are debugging uh, the HDL code, you are you are looking on uh, on the waves in a in, in a simulation in a simulator, and after some time you are really feeling like uh, that like a dead guy from Matrix, which was looking on uh, on on the on the code and he was recognizing what's going on. Uh, the most popular HDL languages are the VHDL, which is mostly used here in Europe, and Verilog, which is mostly used in the United States. Uh, I will show you the syntax or an example of a simple uh, counter uh, later. Uh, now just a few words about the high-level synthesis. High-level synthesis uh, is, is a new trend because it allows you to develop the digital uh, design faster than in the case of the HDL approach, and this is and this is caused by the higher level of abstraction because uh, in 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 the high level synthesis you are not working on a clock level you are just expressing uh, what or you are expressing the algorithm you want to implement inside the FPGA. So very typically we are we, we have a uh, high level synthesis tools from uh, C or C plus plus. Uh, this code is then translated to the VHDL or Verilog. It depends on the tool, but uh, we can have the compiler from a P4 language to the VHDL, which translates the P4 code. Uh, during uh, do, uh, after this presentation, I will show you two possible HLS approaches. The first one is using the C and C++, which is easier. It has a bigger group of users, uh, but it doesn't allow us. It doesn't allow us to define the final architecture of generated device, so you cannot decide what component or what uh, what code will be connected with uh, with uh, with other with other code and so on. So there is also another high level synthesis uh, or a high level synthesis tool, which is the compiler from the blue spec. It's a it's a Hes it's a Haskell based tool. And uh, it allows us to define also the architecture of the generated device on a higher level. So you are able to uh, to have the, the the architecture of generated device in your hand, and uh, you can describe it really, really quickly. Uh, now, let's say that your HDL code is is. Uh, already written and it, and it doesn't matter if it's generated from the HDL 
uh, sorry, is generated from uh, the higher level of abstraction, or if you implement it by uh, by hand, uh, because the HDL code is input for the translation of HDL into the bitstream. Uh, it has uh, the translation take uh, has a several steps. The first one is the translation of the HDL code to uh, the RTL. The RTL is an is acronym for the register transfer level. So uh, it's a it it's a so so this view is the most suitable because you you don't typically because very typically you don't need to look uh, on the structure of of, of, of the gates, you just you, you just uh, need to see that uh, the end gate is connected with the OR gate and and the output is uh, connected to the register and then the register is connected to another uh, another uh, asynchronous logic and so on. So uh, I will show you the how the RTL level looks in the Vivado tool. It basically shows uh, the, uh, how the building blocks are connected together. Uh, after that, when we have the RTL scheme, we can start with the technology mapping from the RTL, uh, which is very typically uh, the translation of asynchronous, of asynchronous uh, circuits into the lookup tables, uh, the algorithm, the technology mapping algorithm can identify uh, some, let's say, parts of the code where the DSP can be used, uh, or, uh, for example, that we can use the carry chains and so on. So, uh, in this phase, the RTL is gener is let's say mapped on basic building blocks of the FPGA. Uh, after that, we need to place and route all these blocks together on uh, on on the FPGA. So this, this step takes the technology mapped RTL. It places the identified blocks on the FPGA and it connects them together. Uh, this phase is the, is the most expensive uh, in, in time and also on memory because, uh, the, because the process for placing and routing is uh, the NP hard problem. Uh, uh, the development tools are so the, so the development tools are not using some uh, some exact algorithms. And uh, if you run the the place and route for uh, for several times, then you will get a different. Then you can get a different results. So. This is the most time consuming uh, process because during this process, you need to meet the timing of, uh, of a digital circuit as we were talking to, to uh, as, we, as I was talking uh, before about the setup and hold timing. Uh, so these two, so these two, so these two parameters needs to be met and uh, there are different kinds of constraints. For example, the timing constraint, the timing constraint uh, when you, for example, express that the design needs to run on 200 megahertz. This infers some uh, maximal delay, which needs to, which has to be take, uh, which, which has to be taken uh, through the asynchronous logic, and you really need to meet, uh, and, and you really need to meet it. Uh, if you don't meet the timing, then you need to make some changes into the design, for example, add, you need to add some, some uh, pipeline stages to, to shorten the critical path, and then uh, the timing can be met. So it's a, so very typically, it's, it, it's a iterative process uh, when, the, when you are changing the architecture to get the right performance and to achieve the timing and it, and after that uh, when the design is placed and round on F, uh, and is placed and routed on the fpga you can you can generate the bitstream which is then uh, uploaded into the fpga uh, here we can see the development process in the figure 
the uh, for the synthesis, which is the transformation from from let's say the VHDL or schematic into the RPL. Uh, the input for the synthesis can be uh, VHDL or HDL sources. Uh, we can also draw some some schematics, and we also need to provide uh, the constraints for for uh, later phases. Uh, the synthesis the synthesis can be if the synthesis was successful. Uh, then we can or we can use the behavioral simulation to check that synthesis was successful it's a it's a let's say simulation on a clock level uh, then we need to start the implementation phase when we are mapping to the target architecture and we are placing and routing uh, the digital design on the fpga uh, this phase can be uh, in this phase we need to we need to check that the timing constraints where this is done in the static timing analysis tool i will also show you how the static uh, timing analysis looks like and uh, and after and, and after the uh, and after the place and route phase we can run the timing simulation which is also very uh, which is also time expense which is very time expensive and uh, in this phase we check that uh, the timing is fine that the digital circuit is working like it was described and it can take a lot really a lot a lot of time uh, but uh, but in practice we are fine very we are fine with the behavior with the behavior simulation because because the uh, the transformation from here to here is typically without a problem so as i already mentioned each vendor provides its synthesis tool the synthesis tool uh, generates a bstream and and it also provides uh, the algorithms and tools to to uh, it, to run the Map, the map phase and place and route. Uh, it also contains a special generator for generate for generation of soft cores. So you can use the predefined library of comp of components. For example, you can, for example you can generate a FIFO memories. You can generate uh, network processing blocks. Uh, you can generate and configure the digital clock management and so on. Again, I can show you how. Uh, the uh, how uh, how the work uh, with the generator looks like, and in these days the standard is also the high level synthesis tool from higher languages, very typically the C or C plus uh, plus. In this example, you can see how the uh, how, how the HDL code looks like. It, it's a VHDL example of the up counter. Uh, so we will start with some uh, library includes. Uh, these libraries are defining the uh, data type, which is called ST STD logic uh, vector. You can understand it as a bus or as a wire. There is also a type STD logic, uh, STD logic which is uh, which is which can be understood as a as a sing as a one bit bus or a, just a wire. Uh, first of all, we need to define the entity, which is the interface of our uh, digital design. So we have uh, output called Cout, which is uh, eight bit wide. We are indexing from zero, and after that, then we have the enable signal, which enables the counting, and then we have uh, we have a clock signal and a reset signal. Uh, after after that, uh, we have to define the architecture itself. Uh, so there is an architecture block. So we will write architecture RTL of up counter is. We will define the internal C out signal, which is a bit wide, and then we will write a process which uh, which is run on uh, the clock signal and the reset signal. 
So uh, if it, so, this is a sensitivity list, and if any of these uh, signals is changed, of these inputs is changed, then the process is run. So in this example, uh, we can see that we have uh, the up counter with uh, asynchronous reset. So the reset can come uh, between, clock, between clock cycles. And if the reset is one, then we will set the value of the counter to zero. Uh, else, uh, if, we if we detect the rising edge of the clock signal, the rising edge is, is this. This is the rising edge and this is the falling edge. Then, uh, then uh, we start this if statement, and if the counting is enabled, then we will count up. Uh, and on this line, you can see the assignment of of uh, the internal signal, which is which is the which is this one, to the output. So this is the example of uh, the HDL. As you can see, it's it, it looks like a code in Pascal. It, it, uh, it has some similarity. It has some similarities with it. Uh, but, uh, as, but as you can feel, the debugging of uh, higher design, of, of, of uh, more complex design, when you have a lot of processes, when you have a lot of blocks, can be very tricky. So this is so this is the end of the first of the of the first section when I try to introduce you the FPGA in a nutshell. And so do you have any questions before before the second before the second uh, part of this presentation? So it seems that huh? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You, you uh, so my question is very naive. Sorry for that. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned about uh, loot, um, mm -hmm. uh, and so so I, I make the, the the. I see that there is a. Well, it it seems to me the common structures are, are very similar to what we see in the Tofino, on where there are a, a kind of table on look table on. And you, that you are able to do at each stage and so on. So, mm -hmm. is it is it where we we could register, for instance, uh, some uh, uh, kind of uh, routing information, like uh, forwarding information, or something like this? Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. You can you, uh, in the lookup table. You can you, you can you can let's say implement this kind of uh, of operation. Uh, very typically, uh, router, routers and, switch, and switches are using the TCAM memory, mm -hmm. where you can upload. When you can upload, uh, for example, when where you can upload rules, and when the search key and, and when the search request is uh, is uh, is run, then all the rules are searched in parallel. So yes, you can you you can use the lookup tables. For implementation of uh, of uh, such kind of a hardware. Okay, and my second question is about uh, you. Met, you mentioned CLB, and there is mm -hmm. a, a RAM also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where in our case, which is a network uh, implementation, uh, it is in the RAM. In it is in the RAM that we will uh, uh, put our FIB. And is there any uh, competition uh, access to the RAM? Because the, uh, I, I think that the CLB is working uh, independently. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, it depends also of the, of the paths that you implement into the FPG. But is there any... Uh, um, so, so, what do you put into the RAM? Is it... Is it, uh, is it uh, our... Uh, Routing table, uh, or is it only uh, some uh, counters or something like this? And is, is there any uh, competition access to this RAM? So, I mean, that some CL, CLB yeah, yeah. could access, and 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 you have a mechanism to protect when somebody is changing the RAM and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, 
So I try to answer. Uh, the memory inside the slice is uh, it's a really small. It typically it it, it typically is a uh, it is typically one. Uh, we we uh, it's it's better not to think about this uh, memory element. It's it's uh, it, oh sorry. Uh, you don't need to think about this uh, kind of memory as uh, th that it is that it is uh, the RAM. It's a uh, really it, it's embedded block inside the slice. Uh, and we are using it for the implementation of, of a synchronous circuit. So, for example, if you want to implement the... I understand, I understand that, but on the next slide, you speak about the RAM. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. about this. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry. And I, 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 so, I thought that the CLB could have mm -hmm. access to the RAM, but yeah, I yeah, may yeah. be completely wrong. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 you are not wrong. Uh, the CLB can access to the RAM because because uh, for, for here we have a RAM. There is a CLB and CL and CLB can be connected to the RAM to the internal RAM memory using the configurable interconnection network. Uh, the structure of or the properties of the RAM memory typically depends on the PGA. Uh, but we can say that that very typically uh, the memory has uh, two in, two independent inputs, so you can so so you can work concurrently uh, with the memory block from from two sides. You have you have uh, two independent inputs, so you have two independent uh, address inputs, two independent. Uh, in, uh, the data inputs, data outputs, and so on. Uh, if you want to, uh, so, so one, so one CL, so the CLB can ex can allocate both uh, sides of of of, uh, of of the RAM memory, or it can it can use just uh, just uh, one one side of the uh, of the memory or one access. Uh, part to, to to the memory. Uh, if we want to implement a huge memory inside the FPGA where more blocks can access this kind of memory, then you need to also implement some memory arbit some memory ar uh, arbitration to control these accesses. So uh, you really need to think on the hardware uh, level. Okay. Thank you very much. You are welcome.